So we looked at, we, we already talked about this idea that we have this quantity called momentum, P equals mass times velocity. And we said that this was the inertia of motion. And we, we also looked at how this quantity relates to Newton's second law. And we said that the sum of the forces equals the rate change of the momentum. So what we want to do now in this section is look at the idea when we said that momentum is conserved. If the sum of the forces equals zero, then what we have is that the rate change of momentum is conserved. Now, if you're thinking about this, about momentum being conserved in time, what we can think about is that we said that delta P is mass velocity final minus mass velocity initial must equal zero. Now, this, this thing of conservation here if you're thinking about one thing, this tells us that the velocity doesn't change in time. But what we can think about is, this can also apply to our system. So the idea is, if we had a system of particles or a system of objects, we, could, we can think about the fact that we have this conservation for our system. So it can literally be we could be literally summing the momentums of all of our, we could be summing the momentums of all of our individual particles in our system, and all the stuff in our system would have to be confined. So to kind of to introduce this thing first, we'll look at a very simple example. So let's say we have somebody standing here on a, we have them standing here on some really slick ice, so that there's no friction. And this guy wants to um, shoot an arrow from his bow. And so what's going to happen is, he's going to shoot his arrow. So this is like before. This is before. And then after. And I know the person isn't... So let's draw the event. Okay. So now what we have is after he shoots the arrow. And now afterwards the arrow was moving with some VA. VA final. Velocity of the arrow. So this is after. So what we have to think about is we need to look at the momentum of our system before and the momentum of our system after because there should be no changes in the momentum of our system. So let's look at before. So we have, we have the mass, our person has some mass, we'll call it mp, and the arrow has some mass, ma. So initially, let's look at the momentum of the person, p of the of the, of the person is equal to the mass of the person times the velocity. And in this case, the person is just standing there, so they have zero momentum. Now, what about the arrow? The P of the arrow, in this case, is the mass of the arrow times its velocity. And in this case, this is also zero. The arrow isn't moving. Now, how about afterwards? What do we have? Well, now the person, the momentum of the person is mass of the person times the velocity. And this person, we have, to, we have to look at this and we have to say, well, wait, we don't know what's going on with the person. And P of the arrow is mass of the arrow times the velocity of the arrow person. Okay, so when we're looking at our momentum, how do we apply this? Well, let's take a look. So what we have is, we have 
we have our sum of our delta t's. And what is this? Well, we have mass of the person, velocity um, t, minus zero. Because this is mass of the, or we should say, mass of the person, velocity. This is one. Then we have to add mass of the arrow. Uh oh, I didn't realize that money was smaller. Let's shift this down. So we have we have this we have that zero equals the sum of our momentum because we said our momentum isn't changing in time, and this is equal to. The first one is the mass of the person times the velocity p after minus the mass of the person times their velocity here, the force, plus the, the arrow. So we have the mass of the arrow times the velocity of the arrow after minus the mass of the arrow times its velocity here. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us the following. That zero has to equal mass of the person times velocity after. This is zero because it's zero. And then we have plus mass of the arrow times the velocity of the arrow after minus zero. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the mass of the person times the velocity of the person after equals negative mass of the arrow velocity of the arrow. So the idea is the arrow flies off in one direction and momentum conservation tells us that the person slides back on the ice in the opposite direction of the arrow. Now, how their velocities are different because their masses are different, but whatever, whatever the total momentum of the arrow going this way is, that's the momentum of the person moving backwards. And it has to be because we had no external forces on our person. The person in the arrow had no momentum here, so later on they also have to have no momentum. And of course, this is a simple example of like recoil, right? If you've, um, if you've ever had to like shoot a shotgun or something, or they show people on TV like shooting guns and they go bang and their arms like fly back, that's the recoil of the gun. And that happens because the bullet flies out, the gun has to kick back. So this is just a nice um, example of the idea of momentum being conserved. Now we can apply this, this idea of conservation of momentum to other cases as well. And a good, a good, there's, a, there's another good case, two more things we can think about in terms of momentum and it being conserved. We can think about momentum being conserved in collisions. So what do we have in collisions? So let's assume now Let's start with the idea that we have um, two we have two balls moving towards each other, or two balls. We have this is mass A and this is mass B. Now we have all different kinds of combinations that we can look at, but when we're thinking about collisions and using this idea of momentum conservation, we really can break this down into two types of categories. So the first type of category in a collision, because a collision is essentially this. If you have one object strike another, there's no external forces um, during the collision. There's just this ball striking this ball, no external forces, so the momentum should be conserved. Now, in this case, we can think of two types of collisions. The first type of collision, we're going to call it an elastic collision. And an elastic collision means that the two objects interact, 
there's no deformation to the objects, there's no loss of energy, the objects just collide and go about. So an elastic collision is kind of like an ideal collision, and what, what makes an elastic collision unique is the kinetic energy, Ke, is conserved as well. So in an elastic collision, the objects would hit, you have momentum conservation. So the elastic is a momentum conservation, but you can also just look at the kinetic energies and see that the kinetic energies are conserved. So you have one object hit the other, and you conserve momentum and energy. The second type of collision is called an inelastic collision. And this one, only momentum is conserved. This means that these two objects collided, but there was like some type of deformation, energy is lost to heat, or sound, or something else, and you don't have um, kinetic energy conserved. Now, total energy is, you know, your total energy can be conserved in both cases, but in the inelastic, only momentum conservation happens. In elastic, you have both kinetic and momentum are conserved. But in inelastic, only the momentum is conserved. So what we'll do in other videos, we'll actually work through example problems of both elastic and inelastic just to see the differences and how you conserve momentum um, in both cases. So we have the idea of um, when we have no external forces, that means the sum of our momentum in our system um, is conserved. So when we look at the momentum of one object and the momentum of another object, our total momentum between both of our objects has to be conserved. So the momentum change here plus the momentum change of the next object has to be zero. We looked at that with the idea of somebody like shooting a bow, their momentum is conserved. Um, and then if we're going to talk about collisions, then we can think about there being two types. One where this ball would smack the other ball, and the balls would fly, you know, the balls would fly around and do something else. And in that case, we, if it's elastic, kinetic energy and momentum are conserved. Now in the second case of the collision, we have the inelastic, and only momentum is conserved. Now another thing about inelastic is that in an inelastic is also the case if the two balls were to hit, and then so you have, you know, you, you have one ball, this ball A hits ball B, and then ball A and B stick together and move along together. This is also a case of inelastic. So we'll explore some different problems looking at these cases in other videos, but in general we have um, elastic and inelastic collisions using momentum.